Hi, my name is Guy Wallace, and in this... Hi, my name is Guy Wallace, and in this pack video short, we're going to discuss the design team and the design team meeting process of MCD, Modular Curriculum Development and Acquisition, the addy like level of the PAC processes for training and development. PAC is an acronym. It stands for Performance Based, Accelerated, customer and stakeholder driven training and development of any blend. There are nine steps of an MCD design team meeting. We would first review the analysis data to make sure everybody is refreshed and reminded of what they produced. The design team members ideally are a subset of the analysis team or are the entire analysis team brought forward into the project in order to take the analysis data and to construct the design. The second step is to establish the event and its initial lesson structure. The third step is to sort the performance data followed by sorting the existing training assessment data, the training content or instructional content or informational content that was assessed for its potential reuse in this design. It was either assessed to be used as is, after modification, or not at all. But it might provide some sort of a framework that could be utilized even though the content itself might not. The fifth step is to sort the enabling knowledge and skills data into the design. The sixth step is to refine the lessons and the content sort to make sure that the sequence is correct, etc. Seventh is to develop then the lesson maps and define the lesson's time estimates. The ninth step is to sort the data and develop all of the instructional activity specs. In the PAC processes, my traditional approach has been to do the activity specs, what we call embellish the spec, after the design team meeting. The designers, in conjunction with the master performers and other subject matter experts on the design team, have framed the design to the instructional activity spec. It has been my view that it's not a worthy time expenditure for the master performers and subject matter experts to work at this level of the design. I've always felt that the instructional designers, if they've been paying attention through the design meeting, are fully armed and aware of the needs and how to then construct the instruction at this level of design. However, your approach might vary. We typically start off with the event map of lessons, just like the map of the United States is a map of the states, but we start off with a blank slate and to discuss what we're going to do with the design team, how we're going to go through those nine steps. We review those nine steps with them, and then we start with an initial lesson structure. Here's one in this graphic. We identify what's going to be in the open and the close, and this is used for the initial lesson structuring for sorting and sequencing the analysis data. You'll notice that I put three rows of empty boxes in the middle there. That's equivalent to the curriculum architecture design approach of a beginning, middle, and end of the training and development path. There's a beginning and middle and end of an event. And so we're going to sort the data into those things that would go more towards the beginning or more towards the middle or more towards the end. And then once we step back and take a look at this, we'll resort and resequence as appropriate. As appropriate in the views of the master performers and subject matter experts who have been assembled in the design team, not based on how the instructional designers think it should go. When we sort the performance data then into this structure, we're going to sort first the performance data, then the existing training assessment data, and then all of the enabling knowledge and skills. Again, all of this came out of the prior phase, the analysis phase. We take that data and we sort it roughly into the beginning, middle, and end of the event map. This is an example modified from a project in my past. You'll notice that the open and close are there in the blue ovals and that there are two lessons that precede the actual open of this course. This course, this event, was a face-to-face instructor-led training deployment, but yet it had prerequisites before people showed up 
to attend this. That's what those two lessons were all about. After sorting all of the analysis data, we can begin to refine the lesson and the content sort, resorting, resequencing, naming things, developing the lesson maps that go with this. Once we've gotten into the lesson map level, we can begin to estimate the instructional activities time and roll that up into defining the lessons total time as an estimate, typically estimated at plus or minus 25% because it is a scientific educated guess at that point. So we begin to sort the data into the columns of information, demonstration, and application. However, there are two types of lessons. Those lessons that are primarily performance oriented, which would include some of the enabling knowledge and skills. And there could be lessons that are purely enabling knowledge and skills that will lead later on to enabling performance, learning how to perform. So there are two types here. But I would start always with articulating the learning objectives, which are at the top of the page, and then going down to the bottom right-hand column in the application column and articulating what is the application that would prove to us that the learners have mastered the learning objectives. Once all of that data has been sorted into the lesson maps, we can begin to sort the data and develop the instructional activity specifications or the activity specs. Again, this is typically done outside the design team meeting. In that effort of embellishing the activity spec, we would take all of the data that's already been identified to be sorted into that and articulate that in the center large block on the spec sheet. We would estimate the times for covering that in an outline form. We would take the learning objectives from the lesson map and articulate the learning objectives for this particular chunk of the content. We would describe it. We would help the developers who will be given these activity specifications as part of their marching orders, their work order for developing the content post-design, so that they would understand what was the intent of this. Is this a role play? Is this a demonstration done by the facilitator? Is this a demonstration done by video, etc.? We can also develop and define the evaluation specifics. We can identify who the lead subject matter expert is. We can define all of the resources that the developers will use, including people, subject matter experts, and master performers. And we can be very specific about what their deliverables are. Take a look at the bottom right hand of this particular format. This identifies for the developer exactly what they are assigned to produce. nine steps provide structure and guidance to the design team and the design effort. Yes, it's possible to change these around a bit, but I found great success in sticking with this particular approach, this particular process. Starting with the performance data, anchoring the event by performance, and then identifying where all of the existing content might go and where all the other knowledge and skills might go that aren't covered by the existing content. I've been practicing, publishing, and presenting on these methods since 1982. My recent book, Six Pack, covers all of this in great detail.